Ladies and gentlemen, we have a new label in the competition, and it's the questionably named Error 4444. Four fours, error four fours, let's call it that. Coming in hot with an early short ish film from the director of Tokyo Gore Police himself, Yoshihiro Nishimura. Uh, Anatomia Extinction, or Anatomia Extinction, whatever. Uh, it's a 54 minute movie about a man who just isn't having a great time. So, uh, is this a label to keep an eye on, or do they fall flat on their face right out the gate? Let's talk about it. All right, first up, we gotta talk the packaging. Um, so as you can see, boop, 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 pretty sexy artwork on the cover here. Nothing too wild, but uh, pretty, I'm pretty hip to it, I gotta say. And uh, it's it's not the best quality slip cover. I don't really care that much, but uh, if it's something you're into, uh, not that this matters, this is sold out anyway. So uh, you're not gonna get your hands on it unless you you know go to eBay and pay some trumped up price. But uh, you know, it's a normal slipcover. It's nothing fancy. It's very, you know, cheap slipcover. But, you know, the art's nice. So that's the important thing. Uh, but then, uh, thing here. Doopy doopy doop. And doopy doopy doop. Open it on up. And holy shit, there's a bunch of stuff right here. Isn't that nuts? And if you take this disc out, which features, by the way, a nice, it's kind of straight from the film, a nice CGI vagina. So I'm not sure I can actually show that on YouTube, but fuck it, I just did it anyway. And then uh, on the other side, you've got a little alternate artwork, which is pretty dope. Pretty dope indeed. I'm just going to keep it the way it is. But still, two options for you. Um, as I do this more and more, I care less and less about this sort of thing. But uh, still, it's always nice to see the little bit of extra effort put into this sort of thing. Uh, and then for the innards, uh, we've got some stickers. We got the Error Four Fours uh, logo right here. Can I get that in focus? Can I get that? In there we go. That's a sexy ass logo right there. My dog is about to bark. I'm gonna get really mad. Then we've got you know more stickers. Look at this. Um, this what? This is like this is just a piece. Actually, this is so. There's two stickers, uh, and then we've got some artwork by the director. Which uh, yeah, he's got. Um, Oh, uh, so pretty cool artist, honestly. Like I, I don't know off the top of my head because I didn't actually plan this part out. But if he has like a book of art, like a, an art collection in book form, I'd be up to to purchase that thing because he's got a pretty cool aesthetic. Uh, and then we've got a little booklet with an essay inside, um, two essays actually. I take that back. Multiple essays. It looks really good. Nice, you know. I mean, it's a short thing. It's not like. It's not anything too huge, but still, again, always appreciate the little effort, like adding little essays inside, liner note type shit. Um, having these little pieces of artwork is really cool. Um, they're printed on a, I don't know, a type of paper. Uh, <laughs> I, I don't, I, uh, but uh, cool. Nice, uh, simple, cute, hip packaging, nothing too like super wild. Again, like this is not a vinegar syndrome type slipcover. But I mean, for those of you like myself who it's not really a hit or miss thing, it's just something to take note of. Uh, there it is, uh, note taken. Oh. Now as for the film itself, what we have here is a pretty clear originator for the Tokyo Gore Police concept. Basically, uh, Nishimura took the concerns of overpopulation in Japan back in the mid 90s and crafted this idea of a parallel or slightly futuristic Japanese society in which the police are privatized and the overpopulation has reached a nightmarish extent. Our protagonist, having become unhinged due to said overpopulation, winds up attacked by a serial killer uh, who is dubbed by the film as the engineer, uh, hence the on the back of the cover here. Um, he, he, the, the engineer basically grants him a fleshy, literal handgun with, uh, with which he can go dole out some punishment on the citizens of Japan for um, not using condoms, I guess. It's basically Tetsuo the Iron Man, but slightly less engaging, but with a clearer message and more of a focus on gooey body horror as opposed to, you know, machine parts. Uh, it's also, again, super fucking short, and uh, y'all... <laughs> is pretty rad. Uh, it's very, very low budget, but most of the effects gags work really well. You can tell that, you know, our dude is 
very serious about his effects work. It's sometimes let down a bit by some wonky sound work, uh, although other times the foley is super fun, so it kind of it kind of works itself out. Uh, it also gets across its central ideas pretty effortlessly, while also keeping up plenty of style to keep the viewer engaged. Um, that's uh, that's about it. Uh, dude gets attacked, gets flesh gun, goes on a killing spree, bada bing, bada boom. Attack on an open ending, and you get yourself a real crackerjack little movie. Uh, the transfer is good. It's a new scan, and as such, does what it has to. There's tons of gonzo ideas here, lots of energetic camera work, permit-adjacent location shooting throughout Shinjuku. It's a it's a naturally grody little mess, and the very faithful transfer doesn't even attempt to get rid of the film's natural imperfections. Um, I didn't notice anything too serious as far as, like, um, blacks getting crushed or anything, but I should note I only really watched this intently once. I might have missed something, but I didn't notice anything that really jumped out at me. You know, I don't think it's going to blow your mind, because again, it's a low-budget 16 millimeter indie film that's never gotten a proper release, but it's a, you know, it's a it's a handsome transfer in a handsome bit of packaging. Uh, but we're, so the, the film itself, great, um, really solid. Extras-wise, in addition to all the physical goodies, we get a short but informative introduction from Nishimura, uh, a deleted CGI opening sequence, and his 2018 eight-minute short film, Yellow Road, about a blind fighter and her three blind assailants, and, well, typical Nishimura what-the-fuckery. Uh, it, it's kind of, it's, it's a cute. Um, it's a cute. There's also a very informative audio commentary by Nishimura with subtitles on account of, you know, the, the fact he speaks Japanese. Uh, a trailer and a great breakdown of the direct parallels to Tokyo Gore Police, uh, which is, of course, a remake of this film. Um, this is basically the template with which he, he made Tokyo Gore Police, uh, like 20 years later. Uh, so yeah, pretty sizable package for such a short film, and uh, definitely more than one would expect. Uh, we'll see how Error Four Fours does from this point forward, and if they can rock the, the if, they, if they can rock this hard consistently. Uh, coming up, we have two double feature discs from them: uh, Funky Forest and its sequel, Warped Forest, uh, scheduled for um, later this year or early 2022, uh, and the combo of Centipede, cent, cent, and the combo of Centipede Horror and Red Spell spells Red, which I'm assuming assuming are being collected together because they are the only two screenplays credited credited uh, to Amy Chan Suet Ming, a name I definitely just pronounced totes correctly. Uh-huh, that's me. Michael pronounces Chinese names immaculately keen, they, they calls me. Uh, both releases show a ton of potential and being double features suggest quite a grand vision from Error 44s. Uh, so all in all, I'd say the future is bright for this particular boutique Blu-ray label, especially for fans of bonkers Asian cinema. Uh, and, and yeah, that's it. Um, I, you know, it's, it's short film, short review. Uh, I definitely, I actually, you know what? I'll say this, I think this is better than Tokyo Gore Police. I never actually, I'm gonna be fair, I never actually finished Tokyo Gore Police. It's one of those movies that I just, I've always meant to go back and finish watching, I never did. Um, but I really like the aesthetic here, it's very dark. And again, has that like grungy feel to it. So I'm I'm pretty I'm pretty hip to its jazz. You know what I'm saying? Uh, I I think it's a very fun experience. I think that you know at at less than an hour long, like what what can you what like you can't even gripe about anything. Like it's 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 fast. It's to the point. Uh, it's not shot on video, which is great. Um, not that there's anything wrong shooting on video. I just think that. Like in the case of Tokyo Gore Police, it's definitely a um, a problem with how the film looks. Uh, the effects are phenomenal, but the actual like look of the film, it just does not please me whatsoever. Uh, there's a lot of great V cinema out there from Japan. I just, I don't know. I'm a bit, I'm a bit, I'm a bit of a demanding type. So uh, anyway, um, yeah, that's uh, that's about it. You know, uh, I, I I'm hoping that they do like a standard release of this at some point because that would be cool only a thousand were made so it's kind of a short run uh but also understandably so so i'm i'm, I'm willing to bet if we you know if this company gets if this company gets enough um you know push from the consumer market then we should be able to see quite a bit of uh uh, standard editions and you know more more quirky little films on disc. So I'm I'm pretty happy with this. Uh, all said and done, I'm also super late to the party. I am like I, I think uh, I saw a review on YouTube that was from like late July, and I'm just now getting one out, which is sad. I'm a sad man. 
who just is always late. Anyway, um, that, was, that, that was a depressing digression. Uh, thank you guys so much. Join the Patreon. I love my patrons. And, uh, yeah, go, uh, go watch a movie.